Hi everyone, my name is Bram, I'm a data scientist at Clario and today I'm going to present to you our third series, our third video in the series of a comparison on streaming frameworks. Uh, here at Clario we're actually um, doing a research with multiple PhD students on a comparison between four streaming frameworks. Those four streaming frameworks are Apache Flink, Spark, Kafka Streams and Storm. Actually for Storm we're using a derivative of it called Heron, but we'll get to that later. A main thing in which these four uh, benchmarks differ actually is their streaming model. As discussed earlier in one of the videos, we have two different streaming models. One streaming model is native streaming, native stream processing, and another streaming model is uh, micro batch stream processing. Three of the frameworks that we're looking at are native. The native streaming frameworks are Kafka Streams, Apache Flink and Storm, and the micro batch framework is Apache Spark. This, of course, has some um, implications on the latency, but we'll get to that later. So, another point in which these four streaming frameworks differ is actually um, the maturity. Uh, Spark Streaming and Storm have been running in the business now for quite some while, for quite a while while Kafka Streams and um, Apache Flink have only recently entered the streaming scene and you can tell by using their APIs that Apache Spark and, Apache, uh, and Storm actually have let's say an edge on um, community influence, community involvement and ease of use because of the fact that they are a bit more mature. A third point in which, where the frameworks differ is which languages you can use to actually um, interact with the framework. For Flink you can use Scala and Java. For Kafka you can also use Ka uh, Scala and Java. For Spark you can use um, Scala, Java, Python and recently also R. And for Storm, you can use uh, Scala, Java, Clojure, Ruby, and a whole pl a plethora of actually um, programming languages. Um, a third part in which they differ is their batch stream, their batch processing capabilities. Um, some of these frameworks have batch processing capabilities, like Spark. Um, and I guess Flink also recently um, started adding a lot of uh, batch processing functions but Kafka Streams and Storm do not have batch processing functions so if you want to use a kind of machine learning algorithm that you train on um, a huge data set or on previous historical data then you will have to make a conscious choice about which framework you use and if you want to use the same framework you are going to be bound to Apache Spark or Apache Flink since the other two frameworks do not have batch processing functionality on which you can train a model. So if you want to train and score in the same framework, you're going to be bound to Flink or Spark. So next up on our list to discuss is the throughput and the latency of these frameworks. For the latency, as we already mentioned, Apache Spark, due to its nature of micro batch processing, actually loses an edge here because Apache Spark needs to wait until the end of its window before it can do its computations so the latency while it is a bit configurable is always going to be higher than in a native stream processing framework. For Flink, uh, Kafka Streams and Storm we can actually go down to really low latency numbers while we can achieve a pretty high throughput in all of these frameworks except for Storm, in which we have noted that in literature, Storm usually needs a lot of extra configuring and a lot of dirty work inside of the code to be able to handle a higher load and a higher throughput. So the last two points that we want to discuss uh, on these streaming frameworks are the delivery guarantees and the fault tolerance of these frameworks. So most of the delivery guarantees in these frameworks are configurable, but I'm just going to go over the default settings. Um, in Flink it's the exactly once, same for Spark, it's also exactly once. In Kafka Streams it um, was defaulted way back to at least once, but now it's exactly once. And for uh, Storm we have at least once as well. And then all of these frameworks also have some kind of um, system in place 
that uh, makes it fault tolerant by doing checkpointing, watermarking, or just saving some states in between so the framework can actually just start replaying or um, continue from where it last crashed or from where it actually just hooks into your stream again. I hope you learned something about our streaming frameworks and what we do here at Claudio uh, at our PhD, uh, during our PhD research. And I'm actually looking forward to publishing it and I hope you look forward to being able to read it as well. Thanks for listening, thanks for tuning in and see you next time. So there's a small disclaimer that us as PhD students here at Claudio want to communicate to you and that is that all of these streaming frameworks are currently under very heavy development. So if you're watching this video in a couple of months or a year from now, be prepared for a lot of changes and a lot of these things may have already changed. Maybe due to our benchmark results, maybe not, we'll see. But that's the way the cookie crumbles.